Hey guys, if I look a little bit tired, it's because I have so many things going on right now, but I still want to keep this YouTube channel going and create more color grading videos and a lot more other kind of videos, but these are the easiest ones to make right now. And today we're launching a new series. Yes, I know I'm launching a lot of series. Uh, I really like to do that. I'm super excited because this series is going to be about grading your footage, which I asked about on my Instagram if you guys wanted to send something. And I think it's really nice exchange. I'm humble that you all want to send me a lot of footage that I can try and grade. And also for the ones that send me the footage, you get to look at it and follow along when I grade it. And I just think that's awesome. I hope that can really help. And another cool feature, at least for this episode, is that I've only maybe looked at this clip for a few seconds before I set everything up and started recording now. So I really haven't tried anything with this clip that we're doing today. And I thought we should start up with a banger. So today's clip is sent in by Thor. He's actually only 15 years old. I think he's from Belgium, if I don't remember wrong. Oh, I hope I don't but I'll put his Instagram here. He sent me this amazing clip from Iceland, one of my favorite countries on earth. And unfortunately, when I was there in 2019, I wasn't really good at recording video or anything and I didn't record much. So I don't really have anything myself from there, but he sent me this clip from his Mini 2 and it is so incredible. So I'm super, super excited to see what we can do with it. It's shot in a normal uh, color profile, so no lock anything today. We're just gonna go straight into color grading and seeing what we can do with this clip. So without much further ado, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and get started. All right, guys, we're inside DaVinci and this is the clip that we're working with today. Let me just show you what we're working with real quick. Play it back. This just looks like, whoa, I didn't even see this when I was in Iceland. I'm so freaking jealous. This is just incredible. So the first thing I notice is that we have a brighter exposure here when it's pointed down and then it lowers the exposure up here. So I think it has some auto settings on when it's shut. So we might have to try and correct for that because it's getting darker here. So when we start color grading, that will have an effect. But let's see what we can do. I think if we find sort of like a middle point in here around the middle of the clip. I cropped the clip a little bit and when we play it back, it might look like the drone is flying really, really fast. That's actually because it was shot in 24 frames and I do everything in 30 frames. So I right clicked, clicked clip attributes and then I just changed the frame rate in here, meaning that it is sped up a little bit. So you can see it looks kind of funny that it's flying so fast. Still looks smooth and great, but yeah, just to let you know that. All right, so I think we'll start here and we just jump into the color grading tab here. All right, the gallery. So we have some more space to work with. And since this is shot in a normal color profile, I think we'll just make a couple of notes. I think this will be our contrast note. And this one will be our exposure note. It looks like it is perfectly fine with the white balance. So I don't want to do anything there. And then we might want to look at what we're going to do with the colors here. So first up, contrast, as always, let's head into the tone curve. Since this is shot in a normal color profile, I don't think we were going to do too much. I'm keeping an eye on the waveform down here as well. We don't want it to clip. It's clipping a little bit here. So let's try and see what we can do here. This is definitely going too far. So I'm a little bit curious to see how much detail we actually have in the sky. We have quite a lot, so we want just pull up the contrast and you can see the problem here is that when we are here, this will look pretty okay. You can see the dramatic change that we already made. But then when we go here, because the auto exposure is now changing the scene because the lighting coming into the lens has changed everything up. Now it's too dark. And when we're in the middle here, that's what we're trying to sort of expose for. But I think it looks great down here now. So let's just try see from here. I think we'll just go a little bit softer on the contrast like so and this is the difference that made so already from this i think maybe it's a little bit too harsh some 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 places here too hard a contrast but just doing this i think the clip could almost just be used let's head into the exposure and just change it up a little bit so i just want to drag down the gain a bit to make sure that we don't have our highlights clipping no matter where in the clip we are i think that actually saved it a lot as well and just drag up the gamma a little bit again and then Lower the lift just a slight bit to counter some of that. That's, you can just see that just softened it out a little bit and actually maybe a little bit too much. Let's just drag back up the gain. It helps that it's nine, like to 95, I think, 95. And then see if we just 
slowly take down some of the highlights, maybe around negative 40 or something like that. I think that's pretty good. That's a little bit more balanced than that very contrasty look, but if we take a look at what we did all together, I think this is a lot more balanced. So what we did is we made a contrast curve here, just an easy S curve. I don't use the dot in the middle usually. I just try to kind of make sure that it's there and look at the image instead of trying to have all the midtones in the same place. And then for the exposure, I didn't use the offset today because it was already probably exposed. I just corrected for whatever we did in the contrast, which made it a little bit too bright up here and a little bit too dark down in the shadows. So it kind of just balanced the image a little bit more, as you can see now. And this is kind of what I would say is the color correction that we needed for this image. I think all the tones and everything looks pretty good already. So this is our base image. This is where we are starting off and then let's just have our color correction up there so this will be our two i think we're just going to do two or three color grading steps today so let's make it simple and easy this is already pretty moody with all the greens and the blues so i just want to see what happens if we try and introduce some teal into the shadows or to the lift the darkest parts here i think that looks pretty good then we get these like nice soft greens they're a little bit yellow now. You can see that when we introduce the, the teal color into it. I don't think that fits this image very well. And then try and counter it in here. So let's just see what happens if we do the opposite here. Let's see if that makes a difference. It still looks pretty good, I would say. It counters it out a little bit more, so it's not as strong. So you can see it's very subtle. Now it's turned on. Now it's off. So you can see it's a little bit more yellow in the greens here. And now it's just a little bit more blue. It doesn't have to be much. It can be very subtle and especially when it's shot in a normal color profile i don't want to go too much overboard with anything here let's so let's just say this was our primaries and this will be our hue curves so let's head into the curves and in here and i have my histogram set to output which means that if i drag something here you can see that it shifts you can see the histogram down here shift meaning for me that makes it easier to see what the output will be and that is also what we see in the image you can see how the colors shift and now you can see every all the blue tones here shifted towards the magenta and that's exactly what we see up in the image here as well everything that was blue or teal turned more magenta right just reset that again just to kind of tell you and show you what that does just going to make a point in all the primary colors here or the main colors not all of them are primaries then we're going to take the teals and i think we're going to push them a little bit towards the greens and see what happens so i'm just going to rotate this and just see what happens and now everything got quite a bit more green. Not sure if I like that look. So let's try and turn it the other way. And that turned it to magenta. So I think around plus 10 here. Might actually just write out 10. And see if it makes a difference if we drag down the blues. Turn them a little bit more magenta. Maybe around negative 10. Something like this. I like that. I think it balances everything a little bit more. And then let's see if we take the greens. What happens then? Doesn't look like it's making a huge change. Now I'm going to take this one and just drag it so we can really see what's going on. Okay, so it's primarily this part here and this part up here that we are changing. So when we drag it up, we drag it towards the yellow and orange tones. And when we drag it down, we turn it towards the magenta and blue. And you can kind of see how uh, this one shifts. So this is the colors that we're actually turning around. And you can see how that just flies all over the place. Now it's all the way over at the yellows. And now it's all the way over at the magentas. We don't want that to happen. So we might just want to want to keep it in the green tones. So I think we just want to make it a little bit more teal. Like so. I like that. Then let's go into the saturation. Do sort of the same thing here. Just get all of our points and I kind of just want to see if it what, what happens if we saturate yeah I definitely want to saturate I want to push some more of that teal into the image so just push that up not too far but about 0.25 and now I'm just dragging them up and down because we still have everything else locked in see what happens if we take the blue tones here definitely want to just desaturate that a little bit to not make it too strong now we're really having the teal color in the water and everything else that is the blue tones are just desaturated a little bit, which I like. And then for the greens, yeah, we want to push a little bit more color into them as well. Just pushing that up. I think that looks pretty good. All right. And then luminance, I don't know if you want to do much. I think if we can hit the water, 
and brighten that out a little bit, that would be great. So let's just try and take the qualifier. You get that in here, just to make sure that's enabled. You can just click and drag on the water here. And then you see exactly where those tones are lying. So that's right here with this dot. And if we just drag that up now, you can see that just turns up, but it also affects the tones up here. So we wanna be careful that we're not clipping the highlights or making it look weird. I'm gonna remove this point to make sure that it's a little bit more balanced. And then I'm just gonna drag it up a little bit. I'm not gonna do too much, just like a subtle, subtle change like this. Let's see if we can touch this. Okay, so this is the tools down here. So we can actually counterbalance it just a little bit by doing so. I think we're getting away with that pretty well. We're getting kind of like a haze up here. Let's see what happens if we turn it up here. That's still pretty good. And if we turn it all the way down, still pretty good. I think it might be a little bit too bright here, but let's fix that in the end. I'll just show you a trick to fix that. So we'll go back around the middle. So this is what we changed with these two, the primaries and the hue curves. We got, this is the base image that we had when we corrected it. And now we just have everything a little bit more green, a little bit softer and a little bit brighter and more teal in the water. So that's basically what we have done. And also in the brighter areas up here. Now I just want to add two masks, I think, just to make it a simple tutorial today and not to go too far with anything here. So from what I'm seeing, it looks like the light comes from over here somewhere. I kind of want to make it so that the lights come from the side. So still up here, but a little bit more from the side over here as well, and then brightens in. And then we're going to do the opposite this way around with the dark, just to kind of like give it some more dynamic with the light. So the first one here, let's control the brightness. So I'm just going to make a mask here. By the way, I made a parallel node made a new node and then I can add and then parallel node. I just have option A to do that. So that's why if you didn't notice what I did, that's how it happens. So zoom out a little bit and drag this out and then soften it quite a bit. So like 50 and then shift H to see what we're doing. Actually kind of want to just do it something like this and then maybe drag it out a little bit more to see what we're affecting. And now we're just affecting all this area and it will soften out towards this part here. So let's brighten it up a little bit, shift H again, and just brighten it up a little bit here, like seven in the gamma. I think it's pretty good. Then I'm going to go into my tone curve as well. I'm just going to drag down the highlights a little bit here and then drag up to make sure that nothing is clipping as much, but then to give them this soft, soft look as well. Now it might be a little bit too much to go there all this way. So just like something like this, and you can see it's way too faded now, and that's because I'm used to working in lock, and this is a normal color profile. So it's just gonna have to do go a little bit softer on this. And that's basically the difference that you have between lock and normal color profiles. You don't have as much room and flexibility to work with as you haven't captured in the flat profile, but the Mini 2 can't do that, and you can see how much we can still do with this image. So I think it's pretty cool. Okay. And then I think I just wanna brighten it up a little bit in terms of like, or not brighten it up, but warm it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna make, if you make a little bit more red than green, you'll get these yellow tones. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more here, like 12 and 11. And it's just gonna give it kind of this green yellowish as it blends together with everything else. I think that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna do the opposite here. So I'm gonna take a squared power window here, turn it around a little bit and drag it down, zoom out. And then I'm gonna feather it in and shift H again to see what we're doing. I think I'm gonna do even more so because we kind of had the light coming from up here and then this way down. So I'm gonna do the opposite here and feather it not as much. I think something like this, let's try. Shift H, then I'm gonna drag down the gamma, like negative 10 maybe. And there's sort of the same thing here. I'm just gonna go a little bit up learning from our mistake before softening up a little bit and then dragging down the shadows something like this you can see quite the dramatic effect you can kind of see what we did with these two masks we're kind of just playing around with the light but it gives a lot more dynamic to the scene and kind of pulls us into this part i think we might want to emphasize this area here so i think we're just going to make one more mask add another parallel note here make a circular mask put it in the middle feather it in or out, however you like to say that. Something like this, I think. 
could be pretty good. And then we're gonna go into the curve here. Just gonna make a very, very subtle curve, but it'll just give a little bit more contrast in the middle. Kind of bring in the focus there and the attention because that's a little bit more focused. So I think, I think that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think that's pretty nice. Yes. All right, should we just see what we did? Oh, let's just name these, sorry. This is our highlights. This is our shadows. Highlights meaning the part up here, shadows meaning part down here. And this is our, I don't know what to call this, mid focus maybe, just to make some mid contrast and focus in here in the middle. So let's just see what we did. So I'm gonna hit option D to turn everything off. And then this is what we came from, a pretty amazing shot already. And then this is what we did with just a few masks and a little bit of grading. Now, we still had the issue of this being a little bit too bright. And when we play it through, it sort of just becomes a little bit too dark down here. That can actually still look okay. Let's just see what our highlight mask does here. I think we managed to soften everything up enough, but just to show you a way to kind of counterbalance this, uh, let's go into effects and then we can take a adjustment clip and put it on top like so. Go back into our color grading here and then just make sure that we are selecting our adjustment clip. We got that here on track two. Don't want to turn the timeline on. Give us a little bit more space to work with. And now I just want to see when we are here, I want the exposure to be a little bit less. So I'm just going to drag down the offset here a little bit and then maybe drag up the lift actually just to make sure it's not too much. But what that will do is now when we go through all of it now, it's way too dark in here. And I kind of like how it looked from around here before and then up till this point. So it's actually just the beginning here that we wanted to soften down a little bit to not make, because I think this is too bright. I think this looks a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do now is, now I just made these changes. Now, if you do this in lock, it's a little bit more difficult because then you have to make another workflow as you want to have the lock conversion in the end, but that for another day. Now, what we can do is that we can say, okay, since it's in the beginning that we want this effect to apply and make sure to mark the adjustment clip and then the opacity, I'm gonna make a keyframe here at 100%. Then I'm gonna go in and say, okay, when is it now it's getting too dark at this point here, actually right here. So that's when we want this one to be turned off. So now it's at zero. And now when we play it through, you'll actually see very subtle. We don't really see it changing up that much. Still changing a little bit here because the exposure is changing. But I think that looks pretty damn good. And we could do the same thing with the highlights up here if we wanted to change that around. But I think that looks pretty good now. This is with the adjustment layer, just to show you the difference. This is without. So now it's bright, 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 bright. And then it gets a little bit darker, like so. And now with the adjustment layer, it's dark here and it gets a little bit brighter, but you can kind of see it keeps the same sort of exposure. Now it gets a little bit darker in the end as well. It's way more fluid all the way throughout because we're just making this adjustment clip up here. So guys, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for, for sending this clip. This was so much fun to do and kind of just grading right off what I see. You see my entire workflow and you see how I go about things. There's no hidden tricks like the, uh, TV chefs that have prepared everything beforehand. I just saw the clip, I just started grading and I actually like the result that we came up with and I love to grade non-log footage as well, just to kind of see what we can do and everything needs to be a little bit more subtle, but also just to show you that you don't need the most expensive gear with all the log capabilities to capture something nice. If you wanna do it professionally, that's probably a good idea to get, but when you're just starting out and if you're just doing it as a hobby, this is definitely doable. And also DaVinci Resolve is has a free version and everything we did today, you can do in the free version as well. So you don't even have to pay for anything. You can get the Mini 2, which is a pretty affordable drone, and you can get DaVinci Resolve for free. Now you do need a computer that can handle video editing and color grading like this. Not as powerful as mine necessarily, but you still need a computer that of course can handle video editing that requires some power. and. Of course, not everything will look like it's from Magical Iceland, but still, it you can capture a lot of things. Even in your backyard, don't say that your country or your backyard is boring. You can capture plenty of stuff. I have reels on my Instagram that have gone viral where I just went to the local forest here in Denmark and shot some things with my dad. And 
yeah, with color grading, you can get a long way. And of course, remember to expose your footage correctly. That's the most important thing anytime. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this new series. I can't wait to make more videos on it as well. And yeah, until the next time, take care.